guys, this is Goblin Inc. I'm Ace of Spades. Uh, I'm here with my friend Screamheart, and today we're gonna talk uh, about Boulder. So, Scream, you hey guys, made, how's it going? You, Scream, made a build about Boulder before me. What did you think about the build when you made it? Uh, it felt really good. I was definitely questioning the nature savagery choice and whether or not that would be good enough. But as you explained, I think that uh, with the macro, it may actually be better. But do you think it is still competitive and worth playing Boulder? If you don't have a macro, I think that it's playable. It may not be competitive when it comes down to seconds differences. Okay. The main thing I was trying to get across is that I, I do think that Boulder is not only a fun build to play, but it's also doable without the macro. But I do think macro might be able to be, uh, you know, help you top those charts. And for now, you as have told me that you believe uh, Shred to be the best build right now, and you think uh, Boulder to be A tier. While I think. Boulder is the ultimate ass tier build for Druid. That's going to be situational for the gauntlet. Right now in the game, the Shred build is not as good bossing. So Boulder could be better if we have to kill bosses that are going to take a little longer. But Shred is definitely the fastest currently. So it's going to depend on the content. Fastest if you have to clear the mobs or we just skip into the end? It depends on the difficulty of the enemies. Okay. Well, let's go over the build and uh, we can maybe talk about what I have in my build, what you have, because I think it's going to be very similar builds. For the Helm, Harlem Queen Crest uh, is best in slot, probably. You use yeah, something that's else. What, I'm thinking. what do you think is an alternative for this one? I have Godslayer as an alternative. Yeah, of course, Godslayer. I think that being able to kill elite packs more quickly uh, is definitely going to be handy. If you happen to use the spear variation, I think Godslayer makes more sense because you want to be able to kill those as quickly as possible to get your shrine buffs. For chest piece, uh, I have Nature's Fury. What do you use for this piece? Uh, it's still, uh, are, you, are you one of those people like the Korean player which uses uh, Juggernaut uh, or do you have the same setup mm -hmm. with uh, Ghost Walker? For now, I have Juggernaut slotted as my recommended. That's mostly for tier 100 content because we don't have Gauntlet yet. So we're going to have to see what we need as far as defenses go before I can put something else there. Interesting. Because I feel this build is like so disgustingly tanky that uh, you don't even need to armor cap. It is definitely very good with survivability because you're constantly CCing everything around you. Mm -hmm. um, but I am trying to avoid those nasty one shots. Okay. I still believe it's just so much HP that is pretty much impossible. So I'm using Nature's Savagery for my aspect on gloves, uh, you were telling me that you have retaliation on it. Yeah, that's the main aspect difference is I have retaliation. I just thought retaliation made more sense for people that aren't macroing, but mm -hmm. I think with the macro, like you said, nat nature savagery could come out on top. That's the same setup I had when I tried it myself and I didn't really feel like the build. Uh, I'm not even sure. I'm going to try to play without a macro and I did a little bit. It, I, I think it's very hard on your hands uh, if you want to spam shred the uh, hurricane and, and the bulwark at the same time i still believe that the you get two or three boulders uh, extra per just because you are playing with shred and i think that makes up the difference in uh, in damage because you are not uh, standing still casting boulder and losing time yeah it's going to be different depending on what you're doing because you said with the macro you're able to get shreds in while you're standing on top of enemies but when I was playing the build without a macro, the shred was only being used for gap closer, mm -hmm. and I wasn't actually spamming it in between. So using nature savagery wasn't giving me enough procs in order to mm -hmm. be worth it. I wonder though if a, with a proper setup, which I think I would like to talk about it later, it is possible to play the build without a macro and obtain the same effect. Like for example, binding them to one, two, three, the shred, mm -hmm. the earth and bulwark and the hurricane, and then you just, chuck 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 press uh, your keys down like that or bind yeah, them correctly on your controller so that you know those buttons can be spawned yeah you think... might be able to take some of the hand pain away by playing on controller keyboard swill i don't think think there's really no nothing you can play outside of this yeah. one it's mandatory regeneration and damage ghost walker and boots uh, same as you i assume uh no that's because i had the juggernauts on the chest so right, i have to put my symbiotic here um, but if I were to swap out the Juggernauts, then yeah, I'd run the same thing as you. I've, uh, yeah, I think that uh, you kind of do have to have at least 50% move speed, 60% uh, uh, to not feel too handicapped by having the Dolmen Stone. So you're mm -hmm. using a two-handed setup. Yeah, I've got the two-hander. I, I do think with the one-handers, you have the extra 
slot that you can snapshot, but I try and tailor my builds without snapshotting, mm -hmm. so I went with the two-hander because I think that's better without snapshotting. And I agree with you, theoretically, on ma on paper, the Marfa, uh, the boulder being, uh, you know, 240% aspect on two-handed, mm -hmm. it's an insane aspect to have. But when I actually went to go and test on the training dummies, uh, even without snapshotting, uh, somehow, uh, the highest possible damage I get uh, is the same. About the bug. After talking with Scream, I was able to test more about the bug and come down with maybe a final solution to the issue of the bug. The bug from my testing, which are not complete yet, seem to be that the metamorphic stone aspect does not work. It gives you curse kill instead of having boulder, but the boulder itself does not gain from any benefit on the aspect other than becoming a curse kill with 40 spirit cost. The 120% normal damage doesn't seem to apply, so neither does when you put it on a two-hand becoming a 240%. Meaning that currently we almost have one-third of the damage we should have uh, because of that bug. So, for that reason, I have moved my metamorphic stone aspects from the two-handed weapon to a one-handed weapon. I knew the bug existed, but uh, it's nice to have a kind of an indication where the bug was. I think it's this one. Guys, let me know if your test agree with it. Then for ring, uh, replacement for ring of the starless sky. I think uh, Umbral is great. Do you think the build needs the resources without uh, Umbral or without Starless or? I don't think I would want to run the build without Starless or Umbral. Okay, so you also have the Umbral on it. Okay, yeah, I agree on that. I think you do need the extra resources. Of course, we cannot give past the Dolman Stone. It's the core of the build. Without it, that's the only item you can't really play the game with. Yep. For boons, I think pretty uh, much we would agree on on the DR. And then we have crit damage uh, and I have attack speed. What do you have here? I, I did go with the max health and crit damage. I like the attack speed, but I tried to solve that with the accelerating. Mm -hmm. The 14% health just sounds really good. It does. Uh, and uh, this is not exactly going to be 10% damage because you already have a little bit of attack speed. The more you have, the last mm -hmm. attack speed is worth, but having already almost 32,000 HP without this one kind of depends how you have 35,000. <laughs> yeah, you can have you can have uh, almost 36,000. So depending on how geared you are, you can switch that or that. Here mm -hmm. I have 45. Have you had any luck with energize or something like that? I run energize just because you get so much uh, fortify from your. Earth skills critting as well as from the bulwark that I don't think it's really necessary. It is true. I kind of agree on that. The other problem is though that Boulder has the lowest like hit chance of anything. It's at four percent. It's <laughs> ridiculous. And uh, it might be that you have four percent for the entire duration of the Boulder. I'm not sure if it works like that. When it goes up, I have to test it. But I don't really have resource problems uh, for now. Well, in that case, realistically, maybe the increased alteration for the Petrify would make more sense. That That is something... Uh, I'm mostly just keeping this scale for suppressors and bosses, though. I'm not same, using it. Okay. But the other two, I feel like they're negligible, so yeah. it, you know, it really just comes down to your preference. Yeah, I do, I do think that because like hit is so low, this is negligible for this build, and this one also is negligible. This might be marginally better. Can't be for the Storm. Do you maybe use something else? Nope, calm before the storm. Calm before the storm. I think for for the skill tree, we're probably gonna agree on most things. The first ability does not matter. Mm -hmm. You max out move speed as well, I assume. Yes. Incredible how equal the builds are gonna be after you know people. Did learn. you? Did I see correctly that you put more? Oh no, that's just your increased points. Okay. Those ones, uh, you probably already know about the bug. Yeah. I'm not taking uh, 45 here, so I save one point, and that's why I take the talent on the boon. I well. put the fortify there, but it was mostly for instances like Duriel, where you get in and you want to get your fortify up before you get to the boss. Oh, I see. Vigilance, uh, one point only in, in the 42. This build is very hungry for points. <laughs> um, I actually didn't take Vigilance, but that's only because I don't have as good of uptime on my bulwark without the nature savagery. I see. 
So that's also might be, might be why you like energize. It's because I have uh, more resource generation. Yeah, it's possible. I wonder how high is your uptime. It should be pretty much uh, always though of unstoppable. It's not bad. Yeah. And a stamp past uh, damage reduction. Any fortify you get queen chance on boulder. I assume you're doing the same. Mm -hmm. And uh, stone guard three points. I'm sure crushing guard three points. I don't actually uh, max out my Crushing Earth just because it's not boss damage. Yeah, that's... I say it's a good choice. That definitely can uh, can be okay. There's two points you can take off this build. It's definitely Crushing Earth. I found two points to be the brick uh, point for which uh, Undaunted is always up. Not that you really need to be fortified all the time. But if you plan to play with Undaunted, which is something I'm going to talk later, I think you need to have two points on this one. Ironically, the... Same thing there applies to the Bulwark one. So I'm getting a little extra Fortify from my Bulwark, whereas you're getting a little extra from your Safeguard. So I think it balances to the same area. Yeah, that's correct. And Venom, uh, in the end, you always uh, poison with your Shred. So you still mm. take the uh, Toxic Claw. Same as you, I think. Yep, of course. Then uh, 12 points of Madness here. You take everything as well. Um, I am currently not taking the points in healing, but I think that might actually be an oversight. Interesting. It might be an oversight to take the points in healing, I was thinking. Because mm. the build is and so I have, And I have two points in my Petrify currently. Mm -hmm. You have the extra duration. Because I only mm -hmm. use it for bosses, and because the boss's duration is already six seconds, I don't really want to kill anything uh, slower than six seconds. That was the reasoning for me. I will say, though, if you do take the Spirit Boon we were discussing, mm -hmm. that 25% is going to mean more if you have an extra second. True. And of course, you have to take an extra spirit. I actually don't take uh, mm -hmm. the damage reduction from Light and Senses. So you probably do. Interesting. I do, yeah, instead of the Vigilance. Yeah, but the, this is four points. Mm -hmm. uh, for, yeah, for 12%, uh, I thought it was not the great of a deal when defenses is already overkill. And for Paragon, I believe we have a somewhat similar setup. We already... Uh, that's the thing I know the most about your build as we talked about it a little bit. Exploit mm -hmm. uh, is uh, important. Why do you think this build... Do you run Exploit uh, in your Lightning Storm build? In Lightning Storm? Yeah, I do. I, I run Exploit in my Lightning Storm. Okay. Okay, so you like um, Exploit in your Lightning Storm. The reason I don't like... Mm. Uh, Exploiting Light Storm is because the first hit of Light and Storm kills the Elite a lot of times, and vulnerability is not applied on the first hit. Mm -hmm. And it's only applied on the hits thereafter. So I believe yeah. it builds like Boulder and Tornado, which do less damage more frequently. You know, then, okay, then I think having the vulnerability for the second, third hit matters a lot. So that's my reason for yeah. that. Very popular nowadays. Uh, to get the extra attack speed, I think it's important for Boulder. Here we have a small difference. You have uh, lucky hit chance and damage with... Um, I don't remember the name of the glyph, but maybe you want to talk about... Tectonic. Why? Tectonic. 50% uh, damage. So I think, I think some of that comes to the Energize again, because mm -hmm. I have the Energize in the build, as well as the Calm Before the Storm. The lucky hit chance is not wasted. Oh. Um, and it's also a decent critical damage multiplier. I see. I find though that usually I do not like to take uh, in this board dexterity. I prefer willpower. Well, I prefer actually only intelligence here. I almost consider it only an intelligence board where I will only do Undaunted or Gazzler or Keeper. Or it depends on the direction I'm coming in from on the board. If, it, if I'm coming in from the right side that you're looking at, then I like to run a willpower. But if I'm coming in from the sides, then I typically will run something that is intelligence or possibly dexterity interesting yeah three points here four and then you would take a fifth point uh here so you take the ship shifter if i well no not for boulder if oh. i run a dex glyph there mm -hmm. then i will lean uh one side or the other depending on what i want so if it's something that doesn't benefit from shape shifter then i'll get the extra point on the armor side mm -hmm. um but it depends but and typically you... i like intelligence there. and it's it, it is a 25 dexterity point for you here or do you go more 25, yeah, I, okay. I never go more than I, um, I like the intelligence one because it uh, allows you to get those three points here pretty much for free. 
so being that at this point it, it's 34 points it's two extra it gives me a nice 67 percent so that's why i thought it was pretty good we already talked mm. about here um but this build can run this rare node which i think is very powerful i think you talked about it wanted to maybe use it as well what are your thoughts now i know we talked a little bit about height and malice versus yeah build. so I've kind of gone back and forth on the Heightened Malice thing. So in my original version of this build, I actually did have that and I didn't have Heightened Malice. And then I went to Heightened Malice because I was trying to improve my AoE clear, but it's kind of a toss up for me. It really depends on the content. If I'm trying to do bosses, then obviously Heightened Malice is not doing much for me. Then we have a little bit of a board we don't usually run this way. The Constricting Tendrils. Uh, here you have Spirit as well. I assume as it is probably the best Spirit board. Yeah. And we have, uh, we are taking those rare nodes here, you take as well, the Devastation is very strong, mm -hmm. you get a lot of 8% damage to elites, very high numbers here. And I believe maybe you do not take this? I do take that one, yeah. It I scales the it Earth and Devastation and it's yeah. nice HP. Yeah, it's really good. Earth and Devastation, which uh, I take actually last. As fifth board, you should be taking this one as... Uh, this board, for some reason, has lower requirements of stats for a... Uh, Fifth board, so only 520 mm -hmm. compared to a 540 if it was this one. I don't know why it's that way, but here I run the outmatch. Uh, I like and Dex dexterity is not often like here. Uh, what do you run in this build? Remind me, please. Uh, which one? What are you referring to? To ancestral guidance. What the glyph do you run? For ancestral guidance, I run earth and sky. Okay, yeah, it's it's, uh, it's definitely strong and willpower. You can enter from this side of the other side. Uh, in my case, I wanted to slot in half match so I could get the core skill damage here, which are big numbers, 28, and you get 27% for only two points. I thought it was pretty good. I have been avoiding that node a little bit. The one that has the basic and the core. It yeah. just feels like it is such a out of the way place when I could save so many points by going straight to the health. Yeah. The issues I had is that this build is very hungry for more dexterity boards. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't really a good uh, dexter sixth dexterity board, unless you want to run Thunderstruck, which does not have anything worth taking, unless you consider the DR. That's true, because I, but I do run Tectonic in mine, which is the dexterity. Yeah, but I, I didn't like taking um, Thunderstruck for um, vulnerability damage reduction, which wouldn't really help uh, as the build is really tanky. Last board. Mm -hmm. Earth and Sky, and just taking uh, it's just really good value of getting those uh, big uh, magic nodes uh, that are 7.5, usually they're 5. You get to multiply them, of course, Earth and Devastation, and you get the crowd control damage. 31% mm -hmm. uh, with uh, one-handed weapons, and you get to 40% with two-handed weapon. For how to play the build, we are in the training dummy place, because I want to show you how to play this build effectively. I would say that you want to try and do this on uh, controls uh, you want to have one two three and you want to set up your skills in a way that is easy to use if you have a controller fine you still i think you need to be smart about where you place your skills but this is easier to play if you set up skills in this way on mouse and keyboard where you have one two three and at that point uh, i would even say you want to put your boulder on your right click that's because this way you're going to have things on two different hands, right? One hand, and then this is your second hand. Left hand, right hand. So this way now, I just I just press 1, 2, 3 like this. And whenever I want to cast Boulder, I just press right click. You can even spam all of them at the same time, honestly. Without even thinking about what you're doing, and the build will magically work. This way, whenever you, you are on an, on an enemy with your mouse, Shred is going to jump on it. Your uh, bow work uh, and hurricane are gonna be cast immediately the moment you have them up. So yeah, again another example. Remember that the boulder is refreshing the cooldown of hurricane, and shred is refreshing the cooldown of earth and bulwark, but also is casting some boulders on their own. I had a discussion with Scream Art earlier about how often do you actually get any boulder with shred? Well, no. It's quite a bit of boulders. I already two boulders up on average, sometimes three boulders like now. It is quite a bit of extra boulder you have, and I think that accounts for having an extra aspect invested in it. On top of the extra resets of bulwark, 
more resources and more mobility. That's the auto play. For the snapshot section of the build, what can be snapshotted for this build is almost everything. The natural balance can be snapshotted, the border aspect cannot be snapshotted, and the accelerating loop can be snapshotted, also retaliation can be snapshotted, but because I think the build has a filling issue, it feels so much better with extra attack speed that I run attack speed over running retaliation, even though retaliation should be more damage. I believe that the increased mobility and smoothness of the build more than pays off for the damage difference. And of course, you can run both of them if you don't have Starless Skies. So you can snapshot all of them. And that's it. Some final words. I think it's S tier. You think it's A tier. Overall, great build. I will leave down below also a link to the version of Screamheart. Thank you for passing by doing this with me. We were just having a Discord conversation and we spent so many hours doing it that I was late on my work. So he's joining me on my work. So it, it concludes faster. Sorry. Thank you very much for joining me and uh, I'll see you guys on the next video.